Hey everyone, welcome to part two of module three. Today we're going to continue talking about linked lists and we're going to add a couple new operations to the linked list class that we started last time. We're going to start by talking about how do you add to the end of the linked list instead of the beginning. Next, we'll talk about removing items from the linked list, both by value, like searching for and removing it, and also by position, like remove item seven. Lastly, we'll talk about how do you loop through a linked list backwards, which is pretty tricky and uh, not a super optimal way of doing that right now. So this will finish up our discussion of linked lists today. So let's go ahead and start talking about those things. All right, so let's start by talking about adding to the end of a linked list. We kind of punted on this last time because we talked about adding to a linked list, but I said that we're just going to do the beginning of the linked list because that's easier. Now we're going to come back and solve the harder problem. So let's imagine that we want to add another item to this linked list. Let's say the number 102, but let's add it instead of to the beginning, let's add it to the end. Now let's think about how we're going to go about this. Some things are going to have to be the same, like we're still going to have to make a new node. We're still going to have to put the data in. That will be the same from last time. We still have to do those things. But now one thing that's different is we can't just directly use head to insert it. Instead, we have to get to this node because if we add our new node, let's go ahead and do that now and put 102 in it we're going to have to change this link here. That's the one we're going to need to reset, not the head link. So what we need to do is we need to loop through until we get to the last node. Which we can just call last. So we're going to make a reference called last and start off at the head and then move on to the next one and to the next one until we get to the node that has its next field being equal to null. So that's an important thing. We need to loop through till we get to the last node. Then the next thing we're gonna do is change the last node next field has to be set equal to the new node that we just created. So we're going to change this. So instead of pointing to null here, this link here is going to refer to our new node instead like this. And then there's only one more thing we have to do, which is to set this equal to null. And we can do that really right here. After we set the data in, we can also set the next field to null kind of right away. And so then our node will, or rather our link list will look like this. Head will still be pointing to 45, then 62, then 88. And after we've set that last node's next link, it will point to the new value, in this case 102, and then 102's next field will be pointing to null. So let's go ahead and implement that. Okay, so I have an empty method here called append. And in this append method, what we're going to do is we're going to implement our code to add to the end of the link list. So as I said before, the first thing we need to do is the same as last time, make a new node. We'll say node. Then we're going to put our data into it. So new node.data is equal to the item which is to be appended. And we can also go ahead and set this up as well at this point. New node's next is equal to null. That adds our new node, which is going to be at the end of the linked list, sets the data field and also sets the next field to null because it's going to be the last one. Now we need to do the next step where we loop through and find the last node. So I'm going to make a node reference called last, which we're going to set equal to head. Now what we can do is we can keep looping while last, not while last doesn't equal to null. This would be one way we could go about doing it. But the problem with this is that at the end of the loop, last would be equal to null and we would have run off the end of the link list. So we don't want to keep going until last is null. We want to keep going while last is next field doesn't equal to null. That way, when we break out of this loop, last.next will be null, but last itself will be a reference to the last node in the linked list. And each time through this loop, what we're going to do is we're going to set last equal to last.next. So we're going to keep looping through this thing, going to the next field over and over again until such time that last.next is equal to null, and then we'll break out. Then what we need to do is we need to set last.next. Instead of pointing to null, now it's going to point to our new node like this. 
And then we'll have a situation like we have in the picture where the last node points to new node and new node points to null, effectively adding it to the end of the linked list. All right, so that's not too terribly bad. Uh, we maybe could have done that last time, but I thought it'd be nice to split it up. So we're adding to the end of the linked list. There's only one sort of thing that we need to worry about with this code, which is whether it works in the edge case of the list starting off as empty. So let's go and take a look at that. So let's see if this works the way we have it. The first step in this little method is to make a new node. So we can go ahead and do that. Then we put the data in, then we set the next field equal to null. So far, so good. Then we loop to the last field. And the way that we have of doing that is making a last reference, setting it equal to head, and then keep going until the next field of that is null. So if we do that, we're going to make last, and we're going to point it at null as well, because that's where head is pointing. Then we're going to check if last.next is equal to null. Now what happens if we do this? If we do this check right here, what's going to happen is we're going to be accessing part of a reference where that reference is null, and that gives us the dreaded null pointer exception in Java. So as we have this code, if we try to use our append method on an empty list, it's actually going to crash the whole program. So we need to do a little fix for this. What we can do is pretty simple. What we can do is just check if head is equal to null. That's the problem case, right? When the head is null, there is no thing at all. Well, we could do one of two things here. We could either write special code just to add to a list when it's empty, sort of as a special case. But we actually already have a method for that. We can just call the add method we already wrote because we already did this and it's going to be exactly the same. If you're adding to an empty list, it doesn't matter whether you add it to the beginning or the end because either way, that's going to be the only thing in there. So we can just call upon this method that we already wrote up here to do the adding in this empty case. Otherwise, I think this appended, append method should work perfectly and handle every other possible case. So let's talk about which one of these is more efficient. Let's say we have a thousand linked list nodes in our list and we call add, which adds to the beginning of the linked list. Whether we have one node or a thousand nodes, it actually takes the same amount of time. If you look at it, we do the same four steps regardless of how big the list is. We make the node, put the data in, set the next field to head and set head to new node. We don't have to do anything special if it's a super big list. But look at append on the other hand. If the list is really short, we will check if it's empty and let's say it's not. Then we make a new node, put the data in, set next to null. And if it's a super short list, we'll have to loop through a couple times to get to the last node before setting the next field to be equal to that new node that we created. But imagine it's a super long list with a thousand or even a million items in it, then we're going to spend a long time looping through the entire list to get to the very last node in it. So this is just sort of like foreshadowing to when we start talking about algorithm analysis. The important thing is going to be talking about how much these things slow down as we have more and more data we're dealing with. This first method, the add method, doesn't slow down at all when you have a really big link list, whereas the append method does slow down. Every node you add makes it take longer to add the next node when you're adding to the end like this. So again, we'll come back to this idea, but I just want to highlight it here when we're talking about this right now. So I think that that does it for adding to the end of the link list. We have this code. Uh, I posted it up here on the notes page for this as well, so you can go back and find it there. The next thing we need to talk about is removing data from the link list. So let's start by talking about how we can remove an item from the link list by value. All right, so let's say we want to remove the node 45 right here. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to have to loop through this list to find it, right? Because we can't just look at head and do anything with removing 45. We have to follow the links until we get there. So eventually we'd like to have a current reference referring to this node 45 so that it can be removed. But in order to remove it, 
we need to keep track of not just the 45, but also the node that's before it. Because what really has to change here isn't anything to do with the 45, it's to do with the 36 node. The 36 node is going to have to bypass 45 and point to the one that comes after it. That's what's really gonna remove it from this list. So we need to keep track of not just the current node, but the one that's previous to it, like this. So we're going to loop through it and do that. So again, I have sort of an empty method here for doing this. And we're going to start just sort of like we did before by making a current reference, starting off equal to head. Then we're going to keep looping while current doesn't equal zero, rather it doesn't equal null just like before. And at the end of this, we're gonna do the same thing we've done before where we say current is equal to current.next. But now the thing is we also have to keep track of the previous node. So up here, I'm going to make another node reference called prev, and I'm gonna start it off by setting it equal to null. The reason for that is because when this first begins, and we're referencing the head node, there is no previous node. So it's possible we're gonna remove the head node itself, in which case we're going to have to know that there is not actually anything previous to that. Then at the end of this loop, when we move on to the next node, actually before we do that, we're going to set previous equal to current. That should serve to get us looping through this list keeping track of not just the node we're currently on, but the one previous to it. So let's look at how that's gonna work. We're going to start off with current, referencing the head node like this, and prev referencing null. Then we're going to keep going while current doesn't equal null and it's not equal to null. And then the next thing we do is set prev equal to current and current equal to current next. So again, the order of these is important. We're going to change prev to refer to current like this, and then we're going to refer current to current next like this. So that lets us move on through this linked list. And then the next time through, we're gonna check if current is equal to null and it's not still. So we're going to set prev equal to current. So prev is gonna be referencing here to current, and then current is going to be referencing to current next. So it'll look like this with prev pointing to 36 and current pointing to 45. So we're kind of like walking through the link list, keeping two fingers on the different nodes. One, the node we're on, and then the next finger is on the node previous to where we're at. So now let's say we're in the situation like this where we found the one we want to remove, which remember is the 45, and we also have the reference to the previous node. Well, what do we actually do to remove it? Well, the first thing we have to do is check if there is a previous node. Because this is gonna be a little bit different for when previous is equal to null. Oops, too many else. If previous is equal to null, we're gonna do one thing. And if previous is not equal to null, like this case, we're gonna do a separate thing. Let's talk about this case first, the one we have on the screen. Previous does not equal null. So what we wanna do is we wanna change this link right here. We wanna set the previous nodes next field equal to what? Well, not current, because that's what it currently equals to. We wanna actually set it equal to current.next. What that's gonna do is it's going to bypass the 45 node and sort of go around it to what current's next is, which is the 60 right here. And that's actually all we need to do. We could do something like set current.next equals to null, but we don't actually have to do anything for this. We can leave this node pointing at 60 and it's not actually gonna hurt anything because eventually the garbage collector after we return from this method and current is gone, is gonna see that there's no way to reference 45 anymore and so it's going to go away, like that. And now we've effectively removed 45 from the linked list, which was our goal. Now we need to talk about this other case right here when the thing we're removing is actually the head node. So that'll look like this. I'm trying to do less where I like erase <laughs> when you guys are watching this, trying to make it a little snappier for you. So if we have this scenario here, 
where we're actually removing the head node. In this case, we're removing 12, and previous is going to be equal to null. So what are we going to do in that case to remove the 12 from the list? Well, it's going to be sort of similar to what we did here, except that instead of setting prev.next equal to current.next, because there is no previous, we're going to set head equal to current.next, like that. And then what that's going to do is change head from instead of pointing to the node that's current, 12, it's going to wrap around and go on to the second node like this. And then just like before, this 12 is going to be removed by the garbage collector at some point. But in any case, we're going to start at head, or we're going to go right to 20 because 12 has been removed from the list. So let's go ahead and add that into our code here. The first thing we have to do is check if the node that we're on is equal or not. So if current dot data is equal to the item passed in, then that means that it's equal and we have found it. And then we have to do our check if prev is equal to null, then we're going to set head equal to currents next. Otherwise, prev isn't null, so we're going to do the other thing, which is to set prev.next equal to current.next. So that should do it. Now, another thing, I think I've said this before, but I'll point it out again, it would be very hard for me or anyone, I think, to like sit down and write this method straight through like this, because it's not super intuitive, right? Node current equals head, node prev equals null. And then going through and doing these lines like previs next equals curs next, it's very hard to visualize what this code is doing without having some kind of visual for it, which is where our uh, pictures and stuff come into play. So when you're doing linked list code, whether you're doing it for the lab or for an assignment, it's going to be really hard to just sit down and write the code. You really have to draw a picture, so get some scratch paper out or something to figure it out. Okay, but I think that's all for removing a node by value like this. So we put this code here on the notes page. The next thing we can talk about is removing an item by the index it is inside of the list. So instead of saying, I want to remove 20, we can say, I want to remove number one. So we can call the method like this instead, and it would use this as an index to figure out which one it should be removing. Now, in order to do that, it's going to be pretty much exactly the same. We're still going to have to keep track of our current pointer, and we're still going to have to keep track of our previous pointer. When we get them in the right spot, we're going to do the exact same thing, where we set either head or prev next equal to currents next. The only thing that's going to be different is our loop. Instead of looping until current.data is equal to the thing we're looking for, we're just going to make a for loop where we loop that many times. So let's go and pull up that. So I have, again, an empty method sort of for this. And what we're going to do is, be, is going to be very similar to the last time. I'll even leave the code up there. So we're still going to have node current is equal to head. And we're still going to have node prev is equal to null then we're going to do something like this. Instead of having a while loop, in fact, we're going to have a for loop. So while int i equals zero, while i is less than the index of the one we wish to remove, and let's do i plus plus. Then as we go through this, we're going to do the same things we did before, where we're going to set prev is equal to current. I uh, cut my finger earlier today, so I'm typing a little bit worse than usual. So thanks for bearing with me. And current equals current dot next like that. We're still going to go through the list. Something else to talk about, though, is what happens if we pass in an index that is too small or too big. I guess in theory we can throw an exception, but instead I'm just going to do something like this to prevent null pointer exceptions. If current is equal to null, we're just going to return out of here because we do not want to pass in an index that's too large and then cause an index out of bounds exception, or rather it would be a null pointer exception by referencing current.next when current is already equal to null. So if it is null, then we went off the edge of our linked list and we should just return. But assuming that doesn't happen, we're going to get out of this loop with current referencing the node that we wish to remove and prev being the one before that. 
And in that case, we can do the same thing we did before to actually do the removal. If prev is equal to null, there is no previous node. So we're going to set head equal to current.next, bypassing current. Otherwise, there was a node previous to this one. So we're going to set its next field equal to current.next, bypassing the one that we want to remove. So the remove method based on an index would look something like this. Pretty much all the same ideas here, except now what's controlling the loop is instead of this loop that keeps going till we have found the one we're looking for, it's going to be just a counting loop. Keep going until you get to index. So that's the remove method, which I also have on the notes over here, the remove method based on the index. Then the next thing we need to talk about is how to print a linked list backwards. So imagine we have a linked list like this, just a short one with three nodes in it. How would we go about printing this thing backwards? It's not really obvious how we would do that, right? Because we can only reference the first node. And so the only one we can get to directly is head. And to get to the last node, we have to loop through the entire list. And so we could do a thing where we start off referring to this list node here, and then move on to the next one, and then move on to the next one and then see, okay, this is the last node in the list, so print out the 41. Then we could also have kept track of how far it took to get to the 41, and if that number is, in this case, three, what we would do is we'd start back at the beginning of the list again and loop through one and then two times, and then know that's our stopping point, so print 20 then loop through one time and get to the 12 and print that out. And then we would be done because we'd have done every node. But now we would be going through the list the whole way through and then almost the whole way through and then a little bit less and a little bit less. And so if our um, link list class looked like this, if it had more nodes in it, we would be going through many, many times, scanning through most of the way through the list most of the times. And so that wouldn't be a super efficient way of doing it at all. It turns out though that there's actually not an efficient way of doing this. This is one flaw with the linked list as we have it right now, and it's one we're gonna fix next week. But for now, I will share with you a much simpler, albeit still kind of inefficient way of doing this. And that way is with recursion. If we want to make our print backwards method like this, it'll be easier if we make it take the node that we're starting from and then I'll argue that it just only takes a couple of lines of code to do this, and we actually don't need any loops at all. The way to do it is to first check if your node is null. If it's null, you can't really do anything because the list is empty. Otherwise, if it is null, what I'll say we're going to do is we're going to call print backwards on node.next, and then we're going to print out the node's data. So let's go ahead and try this. Let me see if I have this. Yeah, so we have print backwards. The problem with this though, as I have it, is that print backwards, because it's recursive, it needs this node to be passed in. But we can't really do that from main because the node class, if you remember, is private. And so we can't even reference a node, let alone pass in the head node. So one common way of dealing with this is to make one method that actually does the heavy lifting and then another method that just um, sort of get things start up, started off. So the print backwards method is just going to call the other print backwards method starting at head. And so we've put on these things, Alice, Bob, Claire, Dave, and we're also using our append method. So they should be appearing at the end of the list. And so the correct order for this is Alice, Bob, Claire, Dave, Edith, et cetera, et cetera. And so if we're doing it backwards, we should get Mark, Lewis, Katerina, et cetera, in backwards order. So let's see if that's happening. So again, I'll do Java C linked list forward out Java, and then do Java linked list four. And it is printed in backwards order. We get Mark, Lewis, Katerina, Jimmy, all the way down through till the end. And so then the question is, why does this work? Because this is probably not super intuitive at all. If node doesn't equal null, 
then we call ourselves recursively with the next field, and then we print the nodes data. So let's go ahead and look at how this works. So let's take a look. The way it works with recursion is that you begin with the stack and every time you call a method, you push a stack frame onto the stack. So we begin in main and then what happens is we're going to call the print backwards method, which I'll just abbreviate as PB. And we're going to be passing in the node. And I'm just going to write what the data for the node that we passed in is so that we can keep track of it. The data we passed in is 12. Because if you look at it, again, this is using a different example, but if we call names.print backwards here, it calls this method, which starts us off with the head node. So whatever the first node in the list is, is the first one that's going to be passed into the print backwards method as this node parameter. Then the first thing that the print backwards method does is check if the node is equal to null. And in this case, it wouldn't be. So we call print backwards again with the node's next field. So coming back over here, this print backwards method is going to call itself and we're going to get another print backwards on the stack. But this one has as its node parameter, the node which stores the data 20. Then what it does inside of it is it checks if its node is null and it's not. So it calls itself recursively again. And so we're going to have a new print backwards and it's going to be passed in the 20 nodes next field, which is the 41. And what it does is it checks if its node is null and it's not. So it calls itself recursively. And so we get one last print backwards on the stack and its node is equal to null because it was passed in 41's next field and 41's next field is null. So then what happens is this one returns right away because it sees that its node is equal to null. And if we look at our code, that means nothing happens. It doesn't do anything at all if the node is null. So that one is going to be popped off of the stack. And so now we're back here. And importantly, we're back here right after the print backwards method called itself recursively. So we're going to be on this line. And this line says to print the node's data. And so when that happens for this method right here, the 41 is going to be printed out on the screen. Here's our screen right here. Then this one returns because after printing node.data, that's basically the end of the method. So this one is going to be popped off next. So now we'll be back in this version of the print backwards method. It has just called itself recursively, passing node.next. And so the last thing for it to do is to print out its data, which is equal to 20. So that happens. And then that's the end of them, that method. So it's going to return. And then we're back in the print backwards method with 12 as a parameter. It has just finished calling itself. So the last thing for it to do is to print its data, which is the 12 right here. And so then that one returns. And finally, we return back to main with the result being that we have gone through the list and we have essentially reversed it because of the order of things. Now, interestingly, if we just flip the order of these two lines like this, now it prints forwards because it prints its own data and then recursively prints the rest of the data. But when we have them like this, it serves to print the list in the backwards order. So hopefully that makes some sense. This isn't like a super useful thing because next week we're going to see a better way of printing a linked list backwards by sort of putting more information into the list. But I just thought this is kind of a cool example of recursion because this would be way more complicated if we had to do it using only loops. There are certain problems that the recursive way of doing it is like way easier and sometimes more efficient too. Okay, so this method is here on the notes page as well. So we talked about today, how do you add at the end of the linked list instead of the beginning? How do you remove nodes from the linked list? And then finally, how do you loop through backwards? So that's all that we're going to do to talk about linked lists in this format. Next week, we're going to be talking about a slightly more advanced type of linked list called a doubly linked list that fixes some of the problems we have right now. One of those problems is that as we talked about, adding to the end of the linked list is much slower than adding to the beginning, because as we have it currently, you have to loop through the whole thing to get to the end before you can add there. It's also currently right now hard to know what nodes become come before another. So 
for our remove method, this isn't a huge deal, but we had to sort of keep those two references as we go through it. That's a little bit awkward. And then likewise, looping through the linked list backwards is hard, much harder than looping through it forwards and also much more inefficient. So next week we have doubly linked lists that are going to fix those problems and be a little bit more uh, better performing as well. So that's all for this week. We have the full example that we've been dealing with linked right here on linklist4.java. Your lab for this week is going to be working on this, so I have the code here for you available. Otherwise, that's all for today, and I'll see you next time.